Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, AstroVenturers, welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, my name is George, and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Skyguider Pro or the Star Adventure. Well, it's that time of the month again that we are coming up on New Moon Weekend. Coincidentally, um, for the New Moon crew, we won't be having a New Moon Weekend. Um, first of the month, I got a uh, new telescope, which there will be uh, information coming up on that. And uh, of course, as we all know, somebody buys astrophotography gear and the box comes equipped with clouds. Well, my telescope, back when I received it on like the 1st or 2nd of October, I gave a shout out to all my friends and I said, guess what? New Moon Weekend is canceled for the month because I got a telescope. Clouds. Well, the forecast this weekend, rain, clouds, overcast the whole time. New Moon Weekend canceled. But for the rest of you that aren't anywhere near me, let's take a look at some of the targets that we're going to recommend here at AstroVenture. So the first target that I want to recommend to you, the Andromeda Galaxy M31. This is a great beginner uh, target. It's a nice large ta target. Virtually everybody's going to have a lens that will work. The focal length you're going to be looking at for this uh, anywhere between 200 to 400, and sure you could shoot a little bit wider, but the thing is that at 200 millimeters you're still going to get a nice good sized target, uh, something that you can easily crop down to print and have a really well presentable target. Uh, with that, uh, stock camera works great, no need for an Astro Mod, and it will start out in the night sky high in the east just off of Cassiopeia, and what I find is it tends to be at a high enough altitude that it's going to get out of that, that glow of the lower atmosphere that you know light tends to get caught up in. So right now it's coming into a good place and over the next few months it's only going to get better as it gets higher. But it's now in that area that I would say it's a target to, to go after. Pleiades M45. Pleiades is another great beginner target, and it also really lends itself to the beginner who is learning to stretch their data and process the data for M45, or Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters. And there's no Astro Mod benefit. Uh, stock camera works great because there is so much blue that comes out in this target. Uh, right now it starts out in the east. It is, um, I find that around 11 or 12 o'clock midnight. Now for myself, um, I'm in Utah, mountain time zone, and I can start shooting at about 8.30 at night. That's when we're at full dark. But I find that Pleiades coming, coming up around the 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock hour is when it starts getting up into some good sky later in the night and out of that thicker atmosphere. So it's entering that prime target shooting time. Um, with that, 200 to 400 millimeter focal length will work great. <clears throat> uh, as is standard, uh, I'm referencing these focal lengths if you are shooting off of a crop sensor camera. And so 200 to 400 millimeters high in the east, about 11 o'clock midnight, that's going to be a great time to start shooting on it. Stock camera. Go for it. You'll be really excited. And an, it, again, for a beginner, when you're, you're, try, you're seeing all these amazing photos that people put out and you just don't have those processing skills, Pleiades lends itself well, or M45 lends itself well to really giving you that pop as a beginner. So check that one out, M45 Pleiades. You won't be disappointed with it. Next target is going to be IC63, also known as the Ghost of Cassiopeia. Now, this particular target, this is going to be the hard one. Uh, the Ghost of Cassiopeia is located uh, just off of the center of Cassiopeia. It is an emission nebula that also doubles as a reflection nebula. And what I mean is, is that 
uh, yes, emitting its own light as an emission nebula does, but it's close enough to its neighboring star that there's plenty of blue light reflecting off of it too. So you kind of get that um, emission and reflection nebula effect. Uh, Astromod will help to pick up the red, but not needed because with longer exposure, you can pick up the red with a stock camera. And there is the blue that's coming from the nearby star. Focal length. Um, for this one, you want as much reach as you're going to have available. So for a lot of us that are sporting maybe a 150 to 600 millimeter lens, that's where you're going to want to go um, out at the 500, 600 millimeter focal length. Now, uh, as I say that, I shoot with a Tamron 150 to 600 generation one lens. Uh, beyond 500 millimeters on that particular lens, it starts to get very soft. The image quality is, just isn't there beyond 500 millimeters. If you're shooting with the Tamron Generation 2 of that lens, it is much better out there at 600 millimeters, so go ahead and crank it out. I cannot speak to the Sigma equivalent from personal experience. However, Sasquatch, Sasquatch Mike does shoot with that lens, and it does seem to be pretty sharp out there at that 600 millimeter. So if you're shooting with the Tamron Generation 2 or the Sigma, I would say go for it, crank it out to 600 millimeter. If you are on that Tamron Generation 1, uh, I'd stop at 500, uh, but focal length is gonna be your friend with this, and exposure time. Because of the fact that it is not a large target, although it is an emission, it's not putting out a huge amount of light, and you do wanna collect enough light that's reflecting off of the nearby star uh, to pick up the blue as well. So check that one out. That's a more advanced target, and that's the challenge that I'm throwing out there for the month. And so let's move on to our next one. I see 1396, the Elephant Trunk Nebula. Now, this target, uh, this is a great target because it's big. It's a big target. And for this particular target, uh, Astro Mod is definitely going to be uh, where it's at. Now, again, you don't have to add exposure time, add more hours. But the Astromod will definitely help because there is plenty of hydrogen alpha there to kick out that red. Focal length, anywhere from 90 to 250 millimeter is going to be great for this target because um, on that crop uh, sensor, which is what I base focal lengths off of, you're going to really start to get zoomed in too much because it is such a large target. It is located in, as I refer to, the basement of Cepheus. Cepheus being shaped uh, like a house and the Elephant Trunk Nebula being in the basement. It's a great target. Right now it's in what I would call the prime viewing area because it's right up over us. And go for this one, again, if you have Astromod or you're wanting the challenge and you have the time to accumulate plenty of hours because at this time of the year and coming up on new moon weekend here in October for my local area, for example, tonight, and this is uh, October 18th, I can start shooting at 8.13 in the evening. And if it weren't for the sun coming, uh, excuse me, the moon coming up, I could actually shoot all the way until 6.10 in the morning before I have any glow coming into the atmosphere from the sun. So if you think about it and you have the time, you're talking about almost 10 hours of shooting. So even with that stock camera, you're gonna be able to accumulate enough of that red to really create a great picture. Not to mention the fact that the more hours, the cleaner your picture is going to be relative to noise. So check that one out. Uh, I see 1396 Elephant Trunk Nebula and it's in that prime viewing area directly over us. Let's keep moving on. NGC 7023, the Iris Nebula. Now, this one right now is sitting in a prime location. Uh, it's right beside Cepheus, so it's, I guess it's the neighbor's house. And uh, this one, you want focal length, okay? So again, we're gonna be looking at five to 600 millimeters in focal length on a stock camera. There is no benefit to going with an Astro Mod, just not needed. And with this particular target, now 
Some of you may have seen the video before where I went after this target and I was initially led to believe about how many massive hours I was going to need to shoot this target. I just found that not to be true. So what I'm going to tell you is with this one, first off, with that stock camera and with the focal length, the 500 to 600 millimeters, because of how bright blue the center area is of it, you're going to be able to pick this one up two, three hours of data, no problem, and you'll be able to get yourself a decent picture. However, take advantage of these long nights, and I want to push you to get as many hours as you can, because with the more hours that you get of data, you're going to start to pick up more of the dark clouds, the, the dark lanes that are all around the Iris Nebula. So with minimal hours, you'll get the blue. With more hours, you're going to be able to really differentiate some of those dark lanes that are in there. So take advantage because right now, we're not into those real cold temperatures. You got those long nights and you could get some outstanding hours of data on the Iris Nebula. And it is in prime shooting location right now. So absolutely go for that one. And uh, with this one, processing won't be too difficult to get the blue but it will take a bit of extra technique skill to go ahead and pull out some of those dark lanes. But go for it, it's a great one. That blue pop is amazing in the Iris Nebula. Okay, I'm really excited to share this next bit with you, but I'm starting out really early to let you know that it's coming so that hopefully you can plan and you can start tracking and paying attention and watching for this next target. So. Uh, coming up in the future, January, so we still got a number of months, but I'm giving you that heads up so you can start looking into it. Comet C2022E3, which was only recently discovered in March, it's going to be making a pass. Now, uh, what I want to share with you is I'll be making a future video specifically on this comet, but the date that you want to mark on your calendar is January 27th. And the reason being is that's going to be a Friday. It's going to allow you a window to capture it around uh, working with the moon. And the target has the potential, this comet has the potential that if you have really dark skies, it may just cross the line of being eye visible with some binoculars. But I'll be giving you more information as we get closer. Know that you're gonna hear about some other dates in February. They're really not gonna work out so well because of the moon, but mark that down in your calendar for January 27th. There will be an eventual video specifically on this comet with some tips, some suggestions, and exactly what it's doing to help you in your planning. But I just want you to get it on your calendar now for January 27th for Comet C2022E3. Should be exciting. Um, I, I would love to see another Comet Neowise come by, but you know, those tend to be a once in a lifetime. So I guess we'll take this one since it's gonna make itself available. Until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights. I would love to see all of you joining us over at our Facebook group, AstroVenture DSLR. And I would really appreciate it if you like the content of the videos that we're making. Please ring the bell, subscribe, share these videos, and help us grow. And until next time, clear skies.